Welcome everybody to the Synapse Philosophy Group. I'm your host, Dr. Haig John, and we've got a crew here of amazing chiropractors, philosophers, uh, recent grads, people that have graduated a long time ago, and uh, really a lot of great chiropractic minds on this podcast, and I feel blessed to be here. I get so much out of this. We're on D.D. Palmer's 1914 book, The Chiropractor, and we're on page 83. Uh, Alan read that last week, and it, it was such it's so unctuous in reality. We need to read it again, and we're going to start from there and keep going because it's even a good starting point. It's the middle of this chapter called Impulse. And you can imagine, okay, here's Steve. I'm letting some people in as we go. And forgive me if I pause. I see somebody come up. Uh, we, we need to let them in too. So, uh, you know, this is, I was just talking to the group before we started that this is history and I feel blessed to be a part of this group. It's not only for, you know, the masses, I grow from each one of these sessions that we're all together of chiropractic philosophy, personal philosophy, and understanding of how we deliver this amazing thing called chiropractic to the denizens of the earth. So I just want to express my gratitude to all of you. Thank you. If anybody has anything or would they like to share anything, this is the time where I'm going to start. Let's rock. Well, I'm cool. diving right in. Okay. Impulses are not substances. They're not ponderable, capable of being weighed. They cannot be measured by bushel. They can have no length, breadth, or thickness. They do not flow. They cannot be uh, presented nor impeded, hindered, obstructed, or interfered with by the placing of an obstruction in the pathway. This is where he's talking about, I really think he's talking about BJ's subluxation model, right? The pinch nerve is not is not possible, is what he's saying right here, right? Hold on, let me let Robert in, excuse me. The arch or bar of a violin, guitar, or other stringed instrument, instrument, which gives permanency to the causes and causes the wires or string to be tensely stretched, do not prevent the passage of a vibration. And then pinch now, now let that's important, right? Because his is nerve tension changing the tone of the vibration but not inhibiting the impulse. Am I am I deciphering that the correct way? Would you guys all agree? Yes? Say it out loud so we can, you can't hear your head shake when we're on an audio podcast. Okay? Yes. So that's I important to it. have this distinction because <laughs> it's so different than BJ and then what we learn in school even, right? Okay? And impingement modifies tension. It changes the amount of vibration, but does not obstruct the course of an impulse. It simply augments or decreases force of an impulse. I'm going to read the next one just to keep clear. Rem Please remember, abnormal functions and morbid tissue are consistent. Okay. I just want to get there, you could add it to that. Okay. How do you feel about that breakdown just now of... Nerve interference, nerve impingement, and nerve tension. <laughs> I think it's important, Robert, or whoever. I just saw you. Somebody have any input? <laughs> or I'm going to keep reading. Okay. Howell's te textbook of physiology. Variations of temperature. The velocity of the of the impulse, the rate of the transmission increases with a rise of temperature upon a certain point. The irritability and conductivity of nerve fibers are influenced markedly by temperature. If a small amount of a trunk nerve be cooled or heated, the nerve impulse as it passes through that way, this way may be increased or decreased in strength. Impulse conductivity may be entirely suspended by cooling a nerve down to zero, zero degrees centigrade, 22 above zero Fahrenheit. Function properly returns 
when the nerves are warmed. This is why he talks so much about inflammation and heat. If you don't know, DD talks a lot about heat. And I'm imagining that's what why he's putting that's a quote from how from Howell's textbook book of physiology. Okay. So heat changing the vibration or tone. We guys all getting that? Mm -hmm. What is the increase in heat or the decrease in heat originate? Say that it doesn't again, matter. Please. I know, but there, give, what, what, it doesn't what? matter where the increase or decrease comes from. He's just what Hal's textbook is just saying that he's at, that is validating something that Didi talks about that there's heat is one of the things that indicates a change, and he's saying that and and how the textbook of physiology is saying that heat or cold changes the the vibration changes. Yeah, I know it, it matters to me. I'm just curious. It matters as to the cause of the heat increase or decrease. I mean, isn't that an obvious? Yeah. Question. Yeah. The cause, the cause of the heat. It, he's not. It, Howard isn't saying what's causing it. He's just saying that the heat change causes a change in the vibration, just like Dee Dee is saying. There's a ten, a normal tension in the nerves, and Hal is saying heat or cold changes that the the vibration. Right. I, I, I the hear tension. that. Yeah. No. My question. So it doesn't matter where it's where the change comes from, whether you stick your hand in, in a bucket of ice or. Or your hand in a bucket of heat, it's going to a boiling water. It's going to change the the reaction that happens. And if you've ever done either of those, your hands get cold in the in the snow, or you well, or you stick your hand in hot water, and you notice that the sensation is different. Since we are interested in the proper tone of the uh, impulse throughout to the tissue cell, I think it's important that we we look at what increases it and decreases it being practitioners or, or facilitators of tone. So what I think why he talks so much about inflammation and heat is if it's coming, if it's from the body itself, creating more heat, or if there's less flow and it's actually getting like cold. Um, that's what I would imagine. Is the answer to the question of where it comes from simply intelligence Sure. Oh, wow. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, is that the answer not to everything case, that happens? This is, he's not, I don't think he's talking about internal. He, we were talking about two different things. Okay. Well, I, I would agree with you. I don't about, know that that's what he's talking about, but I, I, um, I'm just wondering if, if the answer to the question of, of whether it, it is warm or cold is, is intelligence. And, and I, I agree that may not be what he is uh talking about here i yeah. frankly don't know what he's talking about I in this last say... paragraph we have to separate this last paragraph which is a physiology text from Didi's philosophy of what might cause an increase or decrease within the body you know he's and... talking about this is a physiology text which is saying an external force of heat or cold which may cause a reaction in the body is going to change the way the body re reacts to it Right. I mean, it's why I tell people heat, no ice in reality. But, uh, you know, I think the paragraph before was actually so much more poignant yeah. <laughs> because, you know, he is really telling us you do. It's not a pinch nerve. You don't have a pinch nerve. It's either overstretched or under tension, under tense, um, inhibiting or changing the tone of the system, just like a guitar string being out of tune right you you know you're either tightening it too much or it's too lax and that changes the wavelength or vibration of that of that uh of that of that uh nerve system and uh that tone being really is is uh you know the model of of subluxation that is different than bj palmer's which is an a, a compromised nerve by pressure Somewhere in the system. I mean, would you guys agree? Well, I don't know that it's a, an either or thing because Didi defines tone as nerves too tight or too flaccid, as you just said. So, um, yeah. 
it, it just it, it, it's it's an and not an either or in my mind i would agree you know what what it is is we it, it's the science of the time too which they're catching up with modern science they're talking about nerve tension now and i think that's really interesting here comes carol let me let her in and uh well it also seems like a natural uh evolution in chiropractic that then we would start using heat reading instruments to detect the nerve uh subluxation yeah yeah right. that's that. I'm more but heat, it's not, more but, more. well originally the heat reading instrument was not about the 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 neurocolometer was about not about necessarily it, it read heat but it wasn't just heat it was a pattern of heat that didn't change. I think in the beginning with the merit <laughs> system, it wasn't pattern work yet. Yeah, so had you were, was, you were was using the, I don't think Merrick was based on the north kilometer. And had you were talking about earlier, if this is in direct competition, the BJs. I mean, these are subluxation theories. This is uh, you know, our founder and then our our developer developing them, and BJ subluxation theories did change, which did go back into more of the heat, the physiological aspects of it, which DD originated. So then you had the neural kilometer, you had the uh, electroencephaloneuromentipograph, even later you had all the other instruments. So as the theories of our subluxation models, quote, adapted from DD, um, you know, different parts of it, BJ in 1906 would say a subluxation in a way is different than what he said it was in 1924. Now you said something so important because it really is based on the science of the times. And we've done so much research in neurology um, that they weren't able to do. Just, just the equipment wasn't available for them to do some of the research. Right. And they did cutting edge research, edge research then. And uh, so a lot of it does even have to do with the science of, of now, which evolves and very often starts proving things that we theorized in the past. Because, you know, there was no real, they couldn't see this on an oscilloscope, didn't exist, right? So ultimately, you know, they are theory, but yeah. And same thing with the theory, you know, of nerve tracing, DD being an energy healer in nerve tracing, then led to the whole Merrick chart system that, that was there. And, and the chiropractors were able to palpate, you know, the, the quote, the dermatomes, the, the intervention um, you know, the innervated areas of the body then. And and as we know, that's all progressed since the early 1900s. <laughs> but the whole idea, the brilliant idea, which is an ancient understanding, is that everything is adapting and changing. The whole pattern work thing that came about, that even transcends the science. It goes into the whole philosophy of, of life is that everything is changing. If it's not changing, we have a static, unadapted situation. So I love the reasoning behind the pattern work more than any other technique for me. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of validity there, really. Who feels like reading next? I'm good. All right. Why are abnormal functions and morbid tissue always associated? Because tissue can only perform functions becoming their condition. Structure determines the amount of function. The, spirit, the special action of an organ or other part of the body is determined by the firmness, renitency, and tension of tissue. The tissues of biologic, the, the truths of biological science have been known for centuries. I made use of them in formulating the science of chiropractic. The principles which compose the science of chiropractic have existed as long as animals have had backbones. Physicians and surgeons knew of and have taught nerve tension, neurectasia, nerve stretching, and nerve vibration. They have used, and so have the, they, they have used, and so have the osteopaths, the stretching of nerves as a therapeutical agent for many years. I was the first to assume that the neuroskeleton was a nerve tension frame. Vertebral luxations, 
have been known for many years. I was the first to affirm that slightly luxated joints, those which have articular surfaces that exceeded their normal limit of movement and there, be, and, and there become fixed was quite common. It was, uh, it was I who first said that, the, that about 95% of all diseases are because of luxated joints and that the other 5% were, were in other displaced joints. Many physicians and surgeons have occasionally replaced displaced vertebrae. To Didi Palmer rightfully belongs the credit of replacing displaced vertebra or vertebral articulations. See cut on page 220 of the adjuster. Before 1895, a few vertebrae were replaced by physicians and surgeons. This was accomplished by main strength and awkwardness. See cut page 886 of the adjuster. Well, here's 220. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. It has always been held by the pr practitioners that the blood heated the body in health and disease until July 1, 1903. See cuts 487 and 489 of the adjuster. <laughs> the, different, the different kinds of a nerve pressure have been known to physicians and surgeons. I have added nothing new on pressure. However, I am the first to state the displacements of the joints of the tension frame cause nerves to become more tense than normal and therefore we're creating disease. It was always been held that poisons affected the blood, that bloody dil dilution will soon be uh, a theorem of the past. Poisons affect nerves. I am the first to say so. What of it? My affirmation will, will in measure prevent a lying plagiarist from being believed. I originated nerve tracing and taught it to my early students while the pseudo fountainhead was fishing for tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your big slap at BJ right there's there. There's the right? big one. Well, I, I have succeeded in making displaced articular surfaces adjusting practical. Why not make it definite, specific, scientific? I love that. I originated nerve, nerve tracing and taught it to my early students while the pseudo fountainhead let's, was fishing for tadpoles. <laughs> let's think of this. I mean, you realize what he just said is that in reality, he came up with an entire new thought process of, of human physiology that no one was teaching yet. Nerve tension, all the stuff that he just mentioned, he's right. He knew all the books. He read them all by then, you know, back hundred years. Okay. And he's right. I mean, really that's, that's, he's cutting edge stuff, really 1914 uh, or, or, you know, 1895. But, uh, you know, I, I just think that's amazing. I mean, that's just going back to the man is like, whoa, he really did. He's he's he no one was thinking this way back then. It, it's truly amazing to me. Anyway, I'm in awe of Dee Dee Palmer. I can't help it. It's it's just it, it's just mind boggling. It, it's just such an intelligent man. He was a polymath, a, a genius about so many different things. Absolutely. Anyway, you know, what's I, interesting, I too, is uh. Steve was talking about the pattern work and how interesting it is. And then here's Alan reading about DD talking about the skeletal framework and how it affects the neuroskeleton. And that's part of the pattern work where you see the different patterns in the different parts of the spine that was established, you know, in the forties, fifties up to current, um, you know, and luckily I, I still use pattern work daily in my work every day. So I'm still using this, but it is interesting that, D.D. Palmer wrote something over 100 plus years ago, and it's and I mean, it's still true today. And then he's poking, you know, 10, 15 years later, fun at the uh, the fishing for the tadpole person. Exactly. It shot right at B.J. Palmer. I mean, no wonder it was so hard to find this book for 50 years after he wrote it. You realize, I mean, but uh, I, I, I'm just still in, in awe of, of him of really where. DD is, you know, no one was talking about nerve tension, and we're really coming to find out it, it's it's pretty much correct. 
and you know all these stuff nerve different than nerve pressure which has been known to physicians and surgeons so you know they've talked about nerve pressure well before you know dd palmer but his thing was was nerve tension and uh, it, it's valid and it's interesting stuff well, he's, saying that the frame, the, joining us. he's saying that the frame affects the tension that's yeah. what he, she says that that i'm the one that figured out that the frame the spinal frame like the like the like the bridge in a in a, in a stringed instrument affects yeah. the tension it doesn't stop the vibration it but it affects it and so you can then if you can correct that the tension by by adjusting the tension of the bridge that's exactly right and when you think about it that makes so much sense where there's so many fulcrums in the body and how the system works and you know when you go back this is what pasquale always hammered home to us structure determines function structure and he says you know structure determines the amount of function if that structure is you know avern or imbalanced in some way it's going to affect the function and when we go back into these tensegrity models now if you, you guys have heard of tensegrity you affect one area of the system it affects the entire system you can't just affect one part of the system and a lot of the the, the tonal work tonal groups you know, that's what, you know, they, they use in their model. And it's, it's absolutely, it's interesting that Didi's talking in those ways. And this is back in 1914. May I ask yeah, a question? Earlier, the earlier paragraph where he talks about the impingement modifies tension, yeah. changes the amount of vibration. It doesn't obstruct it in the course of the impulse. It simply, the, it, it simply augments or decreases the force of the of the impulse. It changes right. the tension, changes, changes the, the way tension. it moves. Scott, go ahead. Well, I've looked up the word in the past, and I can't, I can never remember what its definition is or or how to use it. But it's the word renitency. Oh yeah. Okay, so used it like eighty times in here. We look exactly. It up I I I, I first it looked it up in <laughs> in uh, you know the nineteen ten, but. Uh, I, and I don't remember what it it means. Can anybody help me? I'll look it's, it up again. <laughs> well, I think it sets a normal vibration and tone of life in reality, like the renitency of the of the muscles in the system. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we we've looked that up before. It's come up many times. I'm glad you're asking it now. Did anybody have their phone? Or I got to do it. I'll do it. I guess okay. I could do that. Can you read the word in a in the context of a sentence? Well, we've read, he's talking about it. Yes, I don't know how, what the word renitency means, period. There you go. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, BJ's <laughs> using, I mean, Didi's use of the word. Uh, he's he's mentioned it, oh, renitence. Oh, that's remittance. Anyway, okay, we can't just sit and look up at things. I'm sorry. You guys find it for me, though, okay? All right, we're going to go to the next chapter. And we're going to go through this. We're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to get through a part of it. There's a lot of good stuff in here, um, but we're coming to where we're going to go to about a hundred and something pages in here. And I want to say next, what we're going to do when we're done with this is go to, again, I think the senior text of Stevenson, since we've done so much with Didi and gotten so much where, uh, you know, insight to the 33 principles that Stevenson got from B from D.D. Palmer It'd be really great to dig back into those again and uh, do the 33 principles from the senior text. She, I didn't know who that was. I wish she would have introduced herself. We could have seen her and brought her in, but she just left the, the group. We've got a lot of people asking about this group. They miss us, times change or what have you, but a lot of people listen to after. Okay, I'm going to read this chapter. I'm going to start with a paragraph. It's called the normal and abnormal movements of the vertebral column, page 85. Muscles or sinews is one of the contra uh, contractile organs of the body by which the movements of the various organs and parts are affected. They possess the power of contraction and relaxation. One author says a muscle fiber is from one of five inches in length, one to five inches in length. Another states they, they vary from a fraction of an inch to many inches. Muscles are directly attached to bones and it, or indirectly by tendons or ligaments. Or more 
uh, definitely speaking, they are made fast to the uh, made fast to the periosteum, the thick fibrous membrane which covers and adheres closely to the entire surface of the bones, except where they are covered with uh, articular cartilage. Muscles in shape may be that of a cord, ribbon, or sheet. The surface of bones to which muscles are attached are rough. Uh, laborers have rougher bones than that of clerks. The bones of females are smoother than males. Bones become rougher as age advances. Muscles, like nerves, are classed as voluntary and involuntary. The voluntary are those who... Those whose actions are under the control of the will. Involuntary control the functions of internal organs, intestines, blood vessels, etc. The part which is moved by contraction of muscles is known as the insertion uh, uh, or distal. And the fixed or central attachment, the origin or proximal. Skeletal bones are connected at, at higher or both at, excuse me, at either or both of the extremities with the bony framework, the tension frame, in quotation, in uh, parentheses, by the body. The, a muscle is attached to two joints, two objects, excuse me. Uh, its contraction lessens the distance between, between them. Motor and sensor nerves, uh, nerves end in voluntary muscles. The involuntary muscles are supplied with the sympathetic nerve system. The tendinous portion of the muscle increases with age. The muscle of an adult are stiffer than those of a child. Therefore, the range of joint movement is diminished with age. Muscular extensibility is greater in youth. As age advances, the tendinous inextendability in in is increased. Wow. I needed more commas and a few more <laughs> periods. Uh, would have been really nice, D.D. Palmer. But remember, this is a textbook, okay? He's got text pamphlets in there. And this is basic 101, but it's important stuff. So a lot of these next paragraphs, and I'm running out of voice, guys, so I'm going to hand off again, too. The next paragraph, let's go through. We can be discerning through some of this stuff and skip it as we go, and then we can move through this book. He All is right. saying that aging is the process of thickening, roughening, and le less range of motion. That's what, he was, that's what I heard him saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. You know, Dee Dee didn't have the greatest chiropractors. Who was adjusting Dee Dee? <laughs> Who was adjusting Dee Dee? Did he ever talk about it, you know? I never read anything about it. Well, Somebody else want to read? Dee Dee did, did look up reticency, and it says it said uh, resistance or opposition. It's the next section of that paragraph, okay. though. That's the first one. There's more definitions of that. Well, I just looked it up, and that's what I found. That's all. Well, there's a little more parts to that. We've read it before. Uh, anyway, so yes. You guys want to read some more? I'm just I'm, I'm curious. This has nothing to do with what really turns us on. But it sounds to me like DD might be feeling attacked and he has to say, I'm the originator. Where's that coming from? I'm the one that came up. If the truth is is so beautiful and 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 enlightened, why do you have to take ownership? I'm the one that came up with. It. I mean, was he being challenged by oh. I, absolutely so this is kind of a defensive it doesn't really matter but it's just well you know, you history, don't stand we... up for yourself you're gonna get freight trained and chiropractic doesn't exist anymore. <clears throat> he had to stand up for himself he had to take shots from his son he had to take shots from the other graduates that went off to do all well, kinds i don't of think things. it matters whether he originated it or not but, i do i do because you have to have well, somebody to stand the behind other, you the other with the issue balls is to be able to push you forward. Just ten years in prior, and so he's probably making somewhat of a distinction between chiropractic and osteopathy. Uh -huh, which you're right there. Had a heck of a cool. lot more uh, traction 
in 19 well it had 10 years more and 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 maybe even more than that i don't i don't know but there's always a distinction that Didi's making between chiropractic and osteopathy uh-huh i thought they started at the same time 10 years difference 1885 and 1895 oh is That's that right. right thank you mm -hmm. interesting hey guys i suggest we skip up to 94 and get to some stuff that's a little closer to what we're talking about go for it that's exactly what we should do all right so i'm, I'm about two-thirds of the way down on page 94 yep uh the ligaments which which unite the component parts of the vertebrae together are so strong and these bones are so interlocked by arrangement of their articulating processes that dislocation of the vertebrae itself is very uncommon unless accompanied by fracture Nerves are never pinched or impinged upon in the foramina. Foramina are never narrowed. In all caps, we do not adjust the vertebra. The vertebra itself is, uh, so far as the chiropractor knows, is never displaced, dislocated, or subluxated. Any extreme movement of the articular surfaces enlarges the foramen, foramen or foramina, causes the nerves and blood vessels to become stretched irritated, increasing its de its carrying power. Nerves are never shut off by the closure of the foramina. There are no dams or obstructions that restrict impulses are never inter interrupted. Reducing the luxated intervertebral articulation, diminishing the displacement of the articular processes, replacing the two articular surfaces, returns the enlarged foramen to its normal size, removes tension and irritation. Irritated nerves cause muscular contraction. The location and amount of disturbance depends on the portion of the nervous system involved. Shall I keep going? Wow, cool. I mean, there's a lot there. Yeah. Would you feel it was cool? He Steve? Just exactly what we read. Nerves are never impinged or or pinched upon in the foramen. Foramens are never narrowed. We do not adjust the vertebra. The vertebra itself, so far as a chiropractor knows, is never displaced, dislocated, or subluxated. What 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 do we do now? I don't know. What do you do? I don't know. What do you guys feel? What is what's what's well, happening? He's just saying you're using the leaf. You're 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 moving the vertebra. But it's not. But that's not what's being adjusted. You're changing the 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 foramen when you move the vertebra, and that allows a change in the tension of the nerve. You're changing the frame. Well, where, when, the did, bridge. When, when did the uh, turn the screw on the top of the violin? You know. <laughs> when did the definition that we had to memorize under Doctor Whitehorn's tutelage? A vertebrae loses its juxtaposition with a one above or below or both, occluding an opening and blocking the normal amount of metal. This was not DD saying one, above, one below. No, no. He says it it occludes a foramen, which is just what DD just said. It's the foramen that is the shape and size of the foramen changes, and that's what changes the tension on the nerve. It's not the vertebra that does it. If the vertebra doesn't pinch the nerve. It's the, the it's the size of the foramen that changes. The pressure changes. How can you That's, change the foramen's size without messing with the juxtaposition of the vertebrae? The juxtaposition is what changes. That's what he says. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Just a slight change is going to change the tone of that nerve. It doesn't have to change much to change, like a violin. You it doesn't take much to change the tone of that, the wavelength right. of that vert. He of says that replacing the articular surfaces returns the enlarged frame into its normal size. There you go. So you're not adjusting the vertebrae. You're adjusting the size of the frame and by 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 putting force into the vertebrae. I wish and I would. Didi, Didi like knows me. we're not we're not doing the adjusting. The mate is. We're offering That's the right. force. That's right. We're allowing a, a restoration of the normal tension that allows innate the function and the and the nerve and the information flow the impulses on the nerves to flow normally and restore health. You know, 
besides going back in time and, and spending time with my mother, my father, you know, D.D. Palmer and B.J. Palmer were right there. I want to get adjusted by D.D. Palmer. I want to show me how change the shape of my foramen. <laughs> I want to know how D.D. Palmer was adjusting. I really do. Because we don't, I mean, you please forgive me. If you guys have something about DD's adjusting, I would love to see it because I have not seen it. Have you seen anything, Barry? There's a few. Yeah, his uh, Dave Palmer, his grandson, had written a few things that his father had said. I know he had really big hands. He's a burly guy. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, he had the ease of, you know, he was the energy doctor. Yeah. You know, so he, he was very in tune and very in touch with, another human being soul and and space yeah. and spiritual space cool yeah. you know he was he was rough on his own family um and you know some of these attacks here um i don't necessarily think they're directly at bj per se because there were a lot of other partners of his you know they had the palmer school in oklahoma as well that was also called the fountainhead because dd the fountainhead had moved there and because dd had started that school they had also advertised that was the fountainhead you know, he had all of his first classmates, his graduating class. Um, I think he was more concerned probably of the MDs coming in and learning chiropractic than some farmer from Canada or Iowa coming in learning chiropractic because most of the classmates at the beginning were MDs, a good percentage of them. Yeah. And so they were all out there starting schools too because you got a diploma to go out and do chiropractic and teach chiropractic. So that's why he needed to say <laughs> I used the vertebral articulations. I said it was the neural framework. I, this, we said on July 1st, 1903, it's not the blood. It was the nerve. So like Scott was saying and Alan earlier, there goes osteopathy's theory of blood control and everything. I, like you, Haig, would like to get in a time machine and see how he adjusted and what he adjusted. We don't know whether it's T2 or C1. We don't really know. You know, this is a, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Barry, because that is why you know history, the history of things, history, and the, and what was going on in the times in that era, right? There was a lot coming out of the Midwest. There's a lot of spiritual things from the Mormonism, Seventh-day Adventist, all sorts of things coming out of the Midwest, spirituality, and then all these new healing arts, just amazing stuff coming out of the world. Knowing what's happening, you know, what year, I mean, is that, uh, the, is that Spanish American war around that time, not too far from there. And, you know, there was a lot happening in the world. So, and, and helping people get well, helping Americans get healthier. You know, there's a lot happening even in our times. That's why history is so important for everything that we do. I mean, D.D. Palmer hopped on a train with his brother from Canada to Davenport, Iowa, and hopped on a train from Detroit, Michigan, with Union soldiers. The Civil War and it had just ended. And, you know, there were still Indians around, you know, Davenport, Iowa, whenever Palmer started as well. It, you know, it was just a few hundred years ago, but as far as knowledge and, um, and, and all that, it's, yeah, leaps and bounds drastically different. But it's incredible. But having to know that, like, you know, what these people went through to get to where they were, and this the learned level, and when we talk about a, a beekeeper, the guy that made honey, you know, what all this stuff, you know, we don't want to downgrade this level of of genius, really. And it, it didn't wasn't contained to one man. This was D.D. D. Palmer and his son B.J. Palmer, because it, with the you know the 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 wherewithal to be able to carry this ball, D.D. D. couldn't have done it all by himself. BJ couldn't have started it all by himself. It took that symbiotic relationship, whether there was conflict or not. It they, it it needed to happen the way it was to get us to where we are right now. And and Mary Baker Eddy, who founded Christian Science, that was about sixteen years before. Yeah, I mean it's all. I mean it's incredible. You're exactly right, and I think that's also very very important. Yeah, we've talked about that in the past. It's true. You know, I think it's very important to, you know, recognize how smart people were back then. When you read what we're reading, when you read A.T. Still, when you recognize that the same year that chiropractic was 
discovered. Tesla developed free energy. And, you know, so much of his technology is starting going to come back mm -hmm. out. But, um, you know, you look at this this history of these world fairs and so forth, where they created these in elaborate towns that were completely electrified from the atmosphere and the ether. And you just recognize how dumb, dumbed down we became starting in the 1920s. I think we as chiropractors say, well, Dee Dee Palmer was a magnetic healer. He was involved in some multi-level marketing thing and, and sold magnetic bracelets to his patients or something. I don't know what magnetic healing looked like back then. Um, but I suspect it was pretty spectacular because not only was Dee Dee Palmer a genius, but there were a lot of geniuses and the knowledge that they had we has been stolen from us. And, and so this is just fascinating. And there was that big utopian thing, you know, with Niagara Falls, 1895 or six, just the first generating. And they had a utopian vision there so there was a lot going on that was facilitating this yeah well, tesla yeah. had a plant there who did tesla did was in niagara falls too oh i didn't know that when when edison was building that tesla was both right of them were there yeah uh -huh. you know it, it all kind of went downhill with the idiot box is really what happened <laughs> That's exactly right. And AI and chat and chat. <laughs> I don't think it's all gone down. I mean, we're living in amazing times now. I, I, I look, we're looking at each other on a screen. It's incredible. It really is incredible <clears throat> to be able to do this and share it. And I, and I appreciate everybody. You know, uh, we're going to do a little bit of skipping around. I, I take some input from you guys for these next few pages. We don't have much left. We have been literally reading this book. Has it been a year now? I think maybe a little bit longer, which is okay because it's absolutely amazing and worth every moment. I, I, I would sleep with the one under my pillow if I didn't want to ruin it. You know, uh, that's what I'm thinking of. But, uh, you know, I, I, there is a lot of meat in here and we're going to touch on a lot of things. And, uh, you know, it's 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 great that what I get out of, of uh, being on this. So I appreciate everybody. We've come to the end of the day, and uh, you know it is. We've got a lot out of today's reading. Anybody have any last bits to share before we go? You want one more paragraph out of here about the cause of disease? Let's save it for next week. Okay. okay. So and, we are uh, going to do this next week, and not Stevenson's. Oh yeah, we're going to finish this book. We're going to skip around a little bit until we're at the end. Okay, gotcha. we're almost there, and then we're going into Stevenson's. Okay. Um, yeah, I think Stevenson's is a good place to go after doing this. I really do. Yeah, I'll take input from anybody. Anybody want to send emails that listen to this? Let me know too. Okay. Perfect. You know, invite people to our page too. And, uh, let's grow that. And I'm, so I can post these on there. I've slacked on posting them, but you guys can share them around. I try and post them on my page and that page. Um, and I've got to get more of them out. I try and get one every week. But uh, let's share them and get some more people to it and listening to it from the page. All right. Hey, bless you guys. Have a gorgeous Thank you all night. For being here. I appreciate you all.